When Huey On contacted me to ask me to check out the new Canvas 24 inch QHD display tablet, I said listen, send me the flagship 4K version and then we'll talk because I don't know if you've heard, but I'm kind of a big deal. They said no, take it or leave it. So I said, yeah, all right. Now they did also send me the Mini Keydal KD100 to use with the tablet. So this is something we're gonna look at as well. But I mean, I currently use a Wacom 27 inch QHD display tablet. So it's not like I'm gonna prefer this significantly cheaper counterpart, am I? Am I? We're about to find out. Before receiving the tablet, I didn't really mind a plain brown box, but I've now been spoiled by the beautiful box that this thing came in. Even the mini Kedal box is pretty. Now, inside the beautiful box was a, oh, never mind. So we've got the screen and the stand for the screen, a pen, the cables, and the usual extras like the glove, pen holder, spare nibs, yada yada yada. Inside the mini Kedal box is the device, a cable for charging, and a USB receiver to use this thing wirelessly. The resolution of the 24 inch IPS screen is the same as my Wacom 2.5K, also known as QHD, which sits in between Full HD and 4K. Personally, I think this is probably a sweet spot for a lot of people, as you get the higher than HD resolution without taxing your system resources too much. That's not to say I'm not willing to try the 4K version though. Here we are. The screen has a fully laminated anti-glare finish, which essentially means it eases reflected light, while providing a more pen on paper feel like you find with Wacom tablets. It also reduces the parallax effect, which you probably already know is the sense of distance between the pen and screen when drawing. The screen has a 140% sRGB colour gamma and a 1200 to 1 contrast ratio. If you want to know more of the really technical stuff, then click the link in the description to check out the product page. The pen has 8000 levels of pressure sensitivity, supports 60 degree tilt and doesn't require a battery. The mini key dial has 18 programmable buttons and a dial with a wireless range of 5 to 10 meters. The battery reportedly lasts for around 100 hours. So the first thing I noticed about the tablet compared to my previous was of course the size difference. The Wacom is 27 inch whereas the Huion is 24 and if you were a regular when I used to live stream you'll know that I complained quite a lot about the 27 inch tablet being far too big which isn't helped by these huge bezel edges. The Huey on screen takes up much less space and as a result I found it much more comfortable to work on. Bonus feature is that I can now see the bottom of my second and third monitors without constantly adjusting the position of my screen. The device comes with a 3-in-1 cable that merges the power, display and USB cables into one, which I really like because I'm a stickler for cable management. I think having it come out of the top or bottom rather than the side would have been slightly cleaner, but it's fair to say this isn't a deal breaker. One thing I thought was weird though was the USB-C to USB-C cable. Now the beauty of this cable is that it merges the display in USB into one from end to end, which is super clean. The problem though is that you still need this 3-in-1 cable plugged in to power it, so you end up with two cables sticking out the screen instead of one. It did mean that I could plug it into my laptop without using an adapter though, which was nice. Although I couldn't find a way to switch sources, so if I plug in my laptop with a USB-C cable, I then need to unplug the HDMI from my desktop for it to work. This is probably a niche problem and, again, not a deal breaker. Now the stand was similar to the one that I'd used with my UG2150 a few years ago, except this was smoother to use and looked better. I tried it for a couple of days and it worked well, but my only problem with these is that I like to have the keyboard underneath the screen as I work. With the keyboard in front, the screen is too far away. With the keyboard off to the side, it's kind of in the wrong place. Now I could install a sliding shelf to my desk, but I already own an Ergotron arm, so I mounted the tablet to that instead. Unlike the Wacom, this fits straight to the arm without the need for an intermediate adapter. 
So before I got started, I did what I do with all new screens and calibrate the colors. I wouldn't say this is absolutely necessary for us 3D artists, so don't stress if you don't own a calibrator, but I do, so I might as well use it. Now, while I wouldn't call myself a color expert by any means, to my eyes, the colors do look great. Definitely no complaints there. And when it finally came to using the device, I must say that I was very impressed by the pen. As I said, I've used non-Wacom tablets in the past, and the pen took some getting used to, whereas this is almost identical to the Wacom, if ever so slightly lighter. And the texture on the screen feels very similar too, which is great. Now, the pressure sensitivity wasn't quite how I wanted it as first, which is to be expected, so I figured I'd change it in the driver settings. And it was at this point that I realised I hadn't even installed the drivers yet. I literally just plugged the tablet in and started playing with it straight away. I was very impressed. So I then downloaded the drivers and installed them no issue. And this allowed me to tweak the pen pressure and set the functions on the buttons of the pen. Now, a nice little unexpected bonus is that the key dial showed up in the software too. So I don't need to download anything extra for it. And from here we can customize all the buttons as required. And when I started working in Blender, I did bump into a problem where occasionally there was a small amount of input lag. When I say occasionally, it was actually quite frequent and quite frustrating. Though I did seemingly manage to fix this by unchecking the Use Windows Ink in the drivers. Now what about the key dial? Well, generally I use these more for drawing than I do for 3D. And I think that's because 3D apps have so many hotkeys that there's usually just not enough buttons to keep up. Hence the reason I mount the screen onto an arm for easy access to the keyboard. Though I did actually find it useful in 3D too, which I'll discuss in a moment. Now if you want to use the device on the screen like this, you can, and it has some rubber feet to help keep it in place. But personally, I work with my screen to vertical for this. Also be aware that it will take up a lot of screen space compared to the Wacom, but I much prefer an oversized controller to an oversized bezel. Now in Photoshop, I find the dial to be a lot more pleasant to use than the dial on the Wacom remote. The reason for this is that it's much easier to turn this big knob that sticks out than it is swirling your finger around a touchpad, so that's a plus. If you press it in, you can switch the functions of the dial too, which is nice. The buttons, I mean, they're just buttons, and they work, there's not really an awful lot to say about them. You can set them to be any keyboard shortcut you like, and as we'd expect now, you can make these software dependent. The only small issue I found was that you couldn't combo them, and what I mean is, if you have a key set to control, and another key set to S, you can't press them together and expect it to save. Now weirdly, it does actually sometimes work, but most of the time it won't. Now as I say, I usually use my keyboard for hotkeys in 3D. And for anyone that's ever used Blender, you'll know that it's because there's just not enough buttons here to cover all the hotkeys. However, what I've found this to be really good for is hotkeys you use somewhat regularly, but not quite enough that you instantly remember what the hotkey is. So for example, when I'm working on a project and I get to creating UVs, what I usually do is select a loop, then use a hotkey to mark seams, then a hotkey to mirror, and then a hotkey to mark seams again. However, since I don't do this all that often, I'm always forgetting what the hotkeys are. But now I have this little device with which I can just assign those hotkeys to, and all I need to remember is those buttons. My experience using this tablet was really good, and if I'm being totally honest, I really wasn't expecting it to be this good. When I bought the Wacom a few years ago, as I say, I was upgrading from a UG2150, and as much as I loved the UG at the time, the difference between it and the Wacom was night and day. So I figured, you really do get what you pay for. So when I switched the Wacom for a Huion, I was expecting a noticeable downgrade, but not only was it not a downgrade, thanks to its lower profile, I actually prefer it. In fact, I'm not even putting the Wacom back on my desk, it's probably gonna get sold. If you're an artist and you're looking to move into screen display tablets, I can sincerely recommend the Canvas 24 Plus. 
It's just about cheap enough to appeal to the hobbyist and has everything you'd need as a professional. Though do bear in mind that there is a 4K model too, which might be worth looking at, but I haven't had a chance to try it out.